Uh, hi guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, in the past, we've discussed uh, different things. Uh, we've discussed um, the costs of building different structures. We've discussed bungalow, we've discussed storied houses, and more are still coming actually. Uh, but today what we are actually discussing, we are discussing the cost of building rentals in Uganda. Uh, but of course, we go into the detailed, uh, into the detailed costing of these rentals. Let's first discuss what these rentals actually look like. Eh? Uh, so what we have here are two blocks, um, all together they are seated on a 50 by 100 plot and um, uh, the plot also has a parking that can comfortably accommodate up to four cars and each of the blocks um, has three rental units okay um, and each rental unit is actually a single bedroom which some, of, which some people usually like to call it double room eh? It has a sitting room and a bedroom and then uh, it has some washrooms. So today on, in the costing we are basically going to focus on only one block because the two blocks are actually identical. Uh, this side is um, <coughs> uh, this side is 12 meters and this other side is 7.5 meters. There is this place right here in the middle. Um, this is where the septic tank can be and also the sock pit can be. Of course, they'll have to be covered. Then those who've washed their clothes and they want to hang them, they can always hang them in this area here. Okay, so this is kind of a common area. Um, so this is our rental. Uh, you can see it has uh, just a, a large sliding door. Um, there is a work desk over here. This is the sitting area. Then there's just a small kitchen cabinet over here where someone can wash their utensils and have them cleaned and then you also have uh, kitchen cabinets over here where someone can put uh, their, their plates and other cutlery and then also you can see there is also a cabinet just below the sink you can, which you can use as a storage uh, to store things like uh, some groceries and also maybe when you're using a gas cylinder to cook or you have a cigar and you're not using it you just put it you just keep it under the under the cabinet okay then you can see the TV area, then you can see there is an entrance into the bedroom and then there is an entrance into the washroom. Uh, you also notice that there is this aspect of where um, if you have a visitor, um, they can easily go and use the washrooms without necessarily having to go through your bedroom. Now that is an aspect where a lot of people really get it wrong. They, they always put this, these washrooms inside the bedroom. So whenever a visitor comes and they want to ease themselves and you don't want them to use the outside toilets, um, they have to go through your bedroom to just access the washrooms. Uh, so um, let's get into it. Um, uh, first of all, we are going to do this here basically in only two phases. And in this very first phase, we are only going to discuss uh, uh, the materials that we'll need from the foundation up to the wall plate. Um, so as you can see on the screen, uh, we will need 220, we will need sorry, 13,000 bricks. And each brick is at two. We are counting it at two hundred and twenty shillings. Uh, that is the ordinary mud bricks. Eh? Um, uh, that's going to bring us to two point eight million. Then we will need uh, six strips of lake sand at two fifty each, uh, which will bring it to one point five million. Um, plus the sand, we will need three trips each at two hundred thousand, which will bring it to six hundred thousand. Um, of course, I'm talking about forward trips. Eh? Of course, all this is basically going to vary depending on who's actually going to supply to you um, the materials. Eh? Mm. So uh, we will need 150 bags of cement, each at 28,000. Now remember these 150 bags of cement, they include uh, uh, building everything, including the ground slab. The ground slab usually takes quite a lot of cement. So that is why the bags are a bit more than they should be, because they're including the slab at this level as well. Uh, then maram, we will need five trips of maram each at a hundred thousand. We also need uh, seven trips of aggregate uh, each at uh, two hundred fifty thousand. Now the aggregates I'm talking about here, for bungalows we can use these uh, these brown aggregates that are actually hand crushed. We might not necessarily use uh, machine crushed aggregates. And then we also need DPC. We also need hardcore. Now um, I want you to notice that uh, it's not in all cases that you'll actually need hardcore. In certain areas, depending on the land where you actually where you're actually building, you might you might bypass hardcore. You might not need it that much. And then also for maram here here at the top, um, in not um, in certain areas you might find the soil that you actually find at the base when you're digging the foundation. 
that soil in some cases can be good to be used as maram, you know, or you could find some cheap maram from a neighboring construction site. So not all these things are absolute, they are basically to give you a picture of how much you should be spending. Uh, then I um, also need uh, 30 pieces of, of 12 millimeter bars, each at 38,000, which makes 1.1 million. Then we'll need ropes, we'll need uh, poles, we'll need uh, hoop iron, um, we will need nails as well. We will need uh, building strings, we will need plane sheets, we will need timber. Um, then also the timber just for making the wall plate. Eh? Um, so we also need 9 by 1 timber bottom, that is for openings, eh? for windows and doors, for windows and doors when you are putting the openings. Eh? Uh, so we will need uh, timber bottoms, we will need spades. I uh, will need holes, we will need pangas, ring wires. Uh, of course, at the end of the construction, most of these things remain, they, they remain really yours, they belong to you. Or you could have an arrangement with the engineer who is going to build for you. Um, you could negotiate the labor costs so that they come with their own tools, so that you don't have to incur the cost of buying the tools. But uh, based on your agreement to the engineers, you can find a way to find a middle ground whereby you won't spend on the tools. And then the engineers are actually going to come with their own tools. Okay, so we need binding wire, then you have miscellaneous. Miscellaneous is basically things that you might not have seen coming, you know, some changes in materials, also maybe water costs, costs of water, the water that is used on site, uh, things like that. Uh, then labor, I have not really calculated the labor because labor is really dependent on which engineer is going to build for you. Labor is usually 25% of the materials. Um, so in this case, without labor, you would need about 18.3 million uh, to have to have uh, your building put up uh, to have your building up to the wall plate. Th um, that was that was it for now, guys. I hope you had. I hope there is something that you have you had to learn from this. Now uh, I'll be coming up with the second phase where we do the finishing of the house, where we do the roofing and the plastering and fitting in of windows and doors. Uh, so please stay tuned and also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on the next information that is actually coming.